Hey, and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Um, today, I got a real jackpot, and so I decided to do a tip on it. What I have here is a hog that for some reason they felt the need to shoot it in the eye for a finishing shot. God only knows. But, you can see that. Let me flip this around so you can see the good side. Okay, so this side's okay. This side's messed up. Now, how are we going to fix it, right? Um, normally, normally, I would always, always recommend that you do all your sewing first on a patch job like this. However, this is so goofed up, I felt like the only way I could do it after I test fitted it was to mount it get the good side set, get my ears set, and then try to match up the puzzle. So I can see that this, this looks like the eye, what's left of the upper eyelid right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I lined up this skin a little bit, tack it in where it goes, sew it up, Now remember, it's not going to be perfect. The customer knows what he did. To make it worse, he wants to, of course, show the battle scar side off for some reason. You know, either the pig was charging them or whatever. I don't know. Except if it was charging them, why'd they shoot it from this way? But hey, whatever makes for a good story. You know. So as you can see, I'm pulling down that if Jeff would pay attention, which he's not, but try to have him maybe take a close-up of how I'm pulling these, this together here and how it's starting to come together, which you can even see with my body in the way. So this is starting to kind of come back together here. Now this is this this part of the skin is that little trough that they get in front of the eye there. So you can tell I'm getting this line back up where it needs to go. Okay, so that that doesn't look too bad. Now if we get a card on that and with a little airbrush and putty work, we're probably able to be okay at that spot. And I'm not really going to um, super tie this off because I'm going to come back later when it's dry and pull the thread out when we finish it. Jeff, where'd my scissors go? It's on the cart. Thanks. So I'm going to leave some slack there so I can keep the tension on it. Now I can tell by these eyelids, lashes, that this goes something like this. So I'm going to uh, come back in this back corner of the scar. And again, he wants the scar in. Otherwise, you could clean it up kind of nice and put a card on it. You might not even be able to see it. But again, oh, and if you do African, a lot of times you get an African, and this is just normal stuff, you know. You'll get them back from the the shipper and they've been laying on the dock for three months or whatever and the rats will have eaten off a lip or an ear or god knows what and you gotta fix it so and again when I do my repair I always use a, just a single thread not a double thread double thread on the seam single thread on a repair I'm just doing a whip stitch here. The other one I did the baseball stitch closer to the eye. But and again, I'll, I'll probably get a lot of comments that I did this wrong or that wrong or I should have done it first. 
you know. But sometimes in taxidermy, there's really no one right way. It's to me, whatever way gets the mission accomplished or the job done, so to speak. And, and this is when I, I haven't used the word combat in a long time, but this is what I call combat production taxidermy. This is when you're in a full-time shop and you don't have the luxury like some of the part-time guys to only take in perfect work or, or make your customer buy a new cape or whatever it is, you know. In a, in a production shop, you just got to get the job done. And you can't, you can't make it take 5,000 hours either. You got to get it, get it done in a reasonable amount of time. Or you're not going to be able to, uh, you know, you're going to go from your shop rate of $7 an hour all the way down to like 5 or something. Okay, so now that's starting to take shape a little bit. So now we've got it to the back corner. Okay, we've got that done. So now we just have to figure out how are we going to fix this? So, I think what I'm going to do, oh, and then sometimes, yeah, you want to take a, a pin or something to, when you get your, your skin indexed where you want it, um, to make sure it stays where you want it to stay. You need to get a couple of pins. And I need something else. What is it I need? I need that piece of skin, Jeff. Yes, sir. That I, I save for... So now I'm just temporarily pinning this here back. Wait, what's behind there? Oh, it's a bent pin. A lot of times you try to save your pins, but they get a little rust on them, and they grab. Well, there aren't one on the ground. That one's going to go on my foot later. Which will be a whole nother tip, how to remove pins from your foot. Okay, I got that one where I want it. What I'm going to do later is I'm, I'm going to take this out and cart it clean when I... Okay. See the problem with this, Jeff? Yes. Hair is going the wrong way needs to go this way when you're making a patch oh, I wasn't making a patch that was an attempt at making some eyelashes oh no what we could do on eyelashes you could get literally you could go down and get your fake eyelashes you know from the of that. from the store and and be like a makeup artist what piece of skin did you get this off of because see this would work it's just not big enough right here okay so and get the good scissors. Yeah, or the knife. Knife. Yeah. Again, I'll look at that. See? Can you get in that on the camera? Yes, sir. We've got a pretty tight shot, but I'll get it tighter. Okay. Can you see that? This piece of skin is what I'm going to use. The color matches and the grain of the matches. So I'm going to wing this. Oh, never cut towards your body like I just did. 
especially see that makes a good corner right there look so now and be careful when you do this so you don't slice the tips of your fingers open what I'm doing is scoring it and I've kind of eyeballed it see that's coming together now just need a little bit get rid of this corner oh and I'll never do this either like it's not a good idea so why am I doing it don't use your specimen as a I'm gonna walk out of a camera so I can lay it down cut it on the bench okay good to go where's my string here. Notice today I'm wearing my official research mannequin shirt. And you can tell I've never worn it before because it's clean. That's going to last about 30 minutes. I don't even think 30 minutes. <laughs> Oops. After this. Oh man. Glad that knife didn't go on your toes. No, how about all the Again. pins? So we got the magnet for, sir. That's it. I spill so much we got a magnet to pick up my pins. Now again, I'm going to whip stitch this in here. Now, you don't want to use a lock stitch on this repair because you want it to be able to move a little bit when you uh, gosh darn it. Do it this way. I'm always trying to keep the camera higher now so people can see, but sometimes we gotta take it down to my height. So I can get the needle through here where I can see it. Okay roughest part about this is getting this started there we go. again it's not going to be perfect but by the time you get it when you go to do your finish work if you do a clean clean job on it you're not even going to know it was missing, I don't think. And then we'll either make some eyelashes or like like I just said, we'll, we'll borrow a set of Jeff's artificial eyelashes. And uh, from when he, uh, he does this punk rock band thing or whatever the hell he does. Mosh pit madness or... Okay, can you see it starting to... Starting to form a lid there. And the back corner of the eye and whatnot we'll worry about with the uh, with the finishing putty, the I mean epoxy sculpt to get that in. Sometimes you have to do that anyway. paintbrush on my eyes but sometimes in this case we need to go 
voice is going to come out maybe even better than I thought. So I'm like, you know, like I like to say on a lot of my tips, there's usually always a solution. You don't panic. You can't always fix everything. But you'd be surprised how much you can fix if you really just, like I said, Try and, try and keep an open mind. I think you can see that it's taken shape. Pretty good. Looking real good, Chuck. Yeah. Except for Ginger bumping the camera six or seven times. Oh, that's all right. They're used to it. Probably half the, you know, probably people drinking beer laughing at me anyway when I'm doing these things. But. And also, as much as possible on a repair like this, try to keep your stitches um, tight like almost stacked on top of each other. Let's see, I'm getting to the tricky part, which is the corner of the eye, where the, the nick tape, uh, the, whatever this little widget part is called is. So, just about got it. For my friend David, over there and the, across the pond, it can be done. You know, I'll pull this pin out. I had temporarily pinned the skin in on the lower lid just to try to get an index on it. I'm going to reposition it. sinking this pin where I normally sink that corner pin and then I'm going to come up and grab the upper lid where I normally do that one eighth inch above the glass in front of the glass now I realize it doesn't match the other side perfect but you got to realize what we started with, what it looked like, and that um, at this point, like I tell you about pushing clay when it's too wet, at this point we need to let it set a little bit so that um, the moisture sucks out of it before we go trying to fine tune it too much. Let me lift it up a little bit turn it toward the camera so there you have it you know like I said this little bump gets pounded down and we put a card on it we're gonna card this the normal way and you know finish tuning it up but anyway that's one way to repair hey hold still buddy that's one way to repair a, uh, an eye that looks like it's completely ruined. Because if you saw it before I put it on, and I didn't really have time to show that because it's so hot today, I had to get this together. I mean, before I got it all worked around, I mean, there's like a big hole like this. So, just, just, uh, 
to show you, you know, that if you just think about it for a little bit, don't panic, don't cut your wrists. You know, you can always email me too if you really have a question. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. We'll see you next week.